Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hey, we're back. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to watch Justice League War, stop listening now, man. Major spoilers. We're going to go right into this, man. Uh, right to the very end, to the mid credits, okay? That scene, man, that just absolutely, man, has me pumped up, man, for the next title, man, inside of the series, man. Justice League War, man. Um, you get to see... Um, it's it's in the it's in the ocean, okay? You got all these sharks and fish, they're all dead. And uh I was thinking to myself, man, when I started looking at this, cuz cuz I didn't first off, I didn't anticipate there was going to be anything at the end of this movie. I thought it was just Justice League War and that's it. <laughs> because it was so fulfilling, man, the actual events that took place inside this movie. All of a sudden, man, we're in the middle of the ocean, there's sharks, there's uh fish, uh, various different um, kinds of fish, man, and all of a sudden, man, you see a shark kind of floating on its uh, on its back with its stomach exposed, and then all of a sudden, man, the uh, water begins to part ways, and the ship comes up, and the first thing I started thinking to myself, I was like, no way, I was like, no way, no way, no way, are you serious, you know, and yeah, it happened, man. It, to me, what I think it was, and who I think it was, obviously, it had to be Aquaman. And it looked like uh, Aquaman had his king inside of his arms, and he said, They killed our king. And all of a sudden, you're thinking to yourself, No way, man. And all of a sudden, man, like, you know, um, they must suffer, okay? That's that's pretty much, he, he, it was like a threat, you know what I'm saying? But also a promise that this isn't the end and this isn't the last time that you've seen him, obviously, man. Um, first off, they have to um, pay for, you know, the destruction um, that happened in the sea. They also have to pay for killing um, the king, man. And I don't even know what to really say, man, because first off, I, let's just look at Shazam real quick. I, I didn't know Shazam was even going to be in this thing. And I started watching it, and I was like, yo, are you serious, man? Because, like... When I bought this this Blu-ray, it was uh, when it first came out, a couple of, probably a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a month or two ago, and um, there was a story that was going online um, about a uh, potential Shazam movie that got canceled because of, obviously because of, of Superman, and uh, <laughs> what was supposed to happen before or at the same time that uh, Superman Returns um, was happening, there was a Shazam movie. And before Man of Steel, there was supposed to be a Shazam movie. And for some reason, it just, the project was um, either pushed back or they just lost interest in it. And they said that it couldn't happen. And that was because of, you know, Superman. They're, they're so similar. But what this movie, first off, what it allowed was the, to really show the difference between those two characters, man. And Shazam is a definitely, man, an important part of Justice League. Um, another person that they're they're missing on here, man, is Green Lantern, and uh, I just got to first off, I got to just say that was the best um, variation and representation of Green Lantern that has ever been ever been done inside of an animated series. I'm dead serious, man. And if you put him like next to um, all the other Green Lantern uh, films, man, he stands out, man, because he took leadership, man. He was still funny. Um, he still did some crazy stuff with. Uh, <laughs> With his his uh his ring power, man, you know, making automobiles and uh he made like a mechanized um robot, man. It was it was pretty awesome inside here. I don't want to spoil too much, man. Um f favorite character out of this whole entire thing was obviously Superman. Um and then next would be uh Cyborg, and then uh Wonder Woman, then Shazam, then Green Lantern, and then Batman. Um I gotta say, man, Batman's suit in this thing was just sick. Let's go ahead and just look at that real quick, man. Yeah. I I'm hoping, man, that Man is still two. It takes little pointers, man, you know what I'm saying, from Justice League War because this was a perfect representation of Justice League. This was a perfect uh, for suits and everything, man. And, and uh, one of my favorite characters, man, as far as line-wise, would have to be Princess Diana um, of the Amazon, you know, Diana of the Amazon. Um, she's uh, pretty, pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie about that, man. Um, favorite line was, uh, ice cream is wonderful. Ice cream is wonderful. That's all I got to say about that. I hope that that's what we get with Man of Steel 2. That's, that's, seriously, I gotta love it. I love it. Um, 
what else? Oh, yeah, the movie. Duh. Wow. Okay. Yeah, the movie, man. What what um what happens, man? Okay. Uh, the movie starts off with Batman and Green Lantern. They're fighting. Um, some bad guys, man. Uh, something that looks like Batman, and Batman is like this myth. He's like this 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 myth that goes around towns um, that people believe in, but they never seen Batman for real. Okay. All the superheroes, they don't really know each other. Um, they end up teaming up because of a threat. And this threat is because of Darkseid. Darkseid is here, man. And, uh, man, all I gotta say, man, is is if if the end goal for DC Comics is to get to Darkseid, if that's what Justice League movie is gonna be about, then we're in for a treat, man. Um, beating out Thanos, beating out Marvel Comics, destroys the Avengers, man. This movie right here was more fun than, than every single... And it was dark, and it was dark. More fun than any any these any Marvel movie that has ever been created, man. It was better than any Marvel uh, um, animated series, any TV show, um, and it it stood right next to man some of uh, the blockbusters, man, that have been for DC Comics, man. So you really, really gotta just love that, man. Um, you got to see Superman and Batman duke it out with Green Lantern. Um, you got to see the origin story for uh, Cyborg, which was, oh man, it was good. Really, really good, man. Um, they kind of showed you, man, you know, how much power Cyborg has and how, um, you know, pretty much he's just a genius, man. This machine that he's trapped inside. Um, it, it was kind of crazy seeing that because they take you actually inside, man. This was the first DC animated um, film that I have ever, you know, witnessed, man, that showed a lot of first-person view, man. Uh, first-person view through Diana when she was slicing up those um, dark side uh, minions who were really um, people that were trapped via the terraforming of other planets. Pretty much, man, dark side goes to other planets, man, and he's just this unstoppable force of death. And when he comes to your planet, he takes all the prisoners, all the people prisoners, okay? Entire civilizations prison prisoners, man. He turns them into his little minions, his little flying beasts, if you will. Um, they kind of look like gargoyles. They kind of look like, to be honest, they look like the thing off of the Power Ranger. I forgot his name, but he's like, oh, no, you know, you know whatever that sound is, man. But uh, he was like, uh, you had that one Asian lady on, tra on uh, Power Rangers. Then you have that golden wolf-looking creature. That's what Dark Side minions look like. Let's just be honest, okay? They look like Power Rangers. Um, whatever that Power Ranger dude was, I forgot his name, and it's been too long. Matter of fact, I'll probably have a marathon coming up here pretty soon with Power Rangers just because of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, so they're, they're, um, they're creatures from other planets, civilizations, and there's billions of them, man. What was kind of cool, man, the, the way that the movie ended, and the whole entire reason that it ended was because of uh, Cyborg's power, man, to open up the gate and the portal and to close the gate and portal back on Darkseid. But he was able to suck in, suck back into the portals all of the little um, Power Ranger creatures from Darkseid, man. So that was really, really awesome. Um, what I also like was um, Shazam, man. Um, they didn't really kind of do an origin story to kind of show you how Shazam got his powers, but we do know his powers comes from the sky. And we do know that he is a kid trapped in, or I guess you could say, how do you want to say, a, a grown man trapped inside a kid's body? Uh, I don't really know how you want to say that. But you kind of get the drift. Um, whenever he says Shazam, I think it's just, it's, 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 it's awesome. It's awesome. His transformation is just dope, man, because it comes with, like, this hood and this cape, and the dude is, he's powerful, man. And he stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, man, with Superman, um, and he has this, you know, this the same humor, man, that he has in the comic books were, were inside of here, man, so I really did, uh, really appreciate that. And when he's hitting on, you know, Diana, it was just, it was, it was classic, you know, um, calls her, calls her, like, this Greek babe, um, uh, you know, um, you know, she's hot. She's, you know, he, he's, he's a kid, but he's, he's a grown man or I don't know how to really explain it, man. I mean, if you guys know who Shazam is, obviously you understand what I'm talking about, but it's kind of really hard to talk about Shazam because of who Shazam is. So I kind of understand why the movie, you know, wouldn't work out unless you get a really great <laughs> writing team. Um, obviously not me. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was kind of cool, man? Um, I, I don't, I don't like Batman. Um, 
everybody knows that. I don't like Batman. I, I like Batman the film, you know, the saying like the the, the Christopher um, Christian Bell film, Christopher Nolan film. Obviously, I like that. Uh, but I don't like Batman the character. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll take him as far as you know supporting DC Comics because I, I'm, a, I'm a DC comic boy. Um, um, for life, man, you know, I'm always going to be a DC comic fan over Marvel, period, man, um, and obviously I'll, I'll support Marvel also because, I mean, I'm a comic book fan, but, um, the character of Batman I just can't relate to because he's a billionaire and, um, he's, he's, he's just a dude, man, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really see anything in that, but I will say this, man, um, in this movie, they made Batman a very likable character, man, a very... A relatable character and without even going into real uh, detail inside of his origin story man they just kind of put it out there you know my parents were killed and that's what he said my parents were killed when I was a young boy and that was it man they didn't really you know kind of flash back and show you that all that all that crap man nobody nobody cares about that let's just be real um, but how they presented it in this movie and that's what I'm hoping that Man of Steel 2 does they present it in a way that it just says it, you know, puts it out there, and that's it. Not all this sob story, no, roses falling around, you know, gunshots, all that crap. Give it to me <laughs> the way it is. Give me the story, okay, and that's it. And then move on with your life, all right? Uh, <laughs> but I, I will say this, man. I will say this. This team right here, Superman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Batman, Shazam, and Green Lantern, Man, oh, and in the Flash, I didn't talk about him yet. But um, those seven characters, man, those seven characters, man, with a nod to the uh, uh, Super Seven, it was it was perfect, man. Because I mean, if you're a fan of comic books, man, you kind of I'm not saying that you have to know every single thing about comic books, but you kind of you know get you know excited when they when they nod when they put little nods in there to um, to your 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 comic books, man. You know. And, 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 um, the Super 7, that, that was kind of dope, man. I'm not gonna lie about that. That was kind of awesome because, you know, you're sitting here like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So they, you know, obviously we're watching Justice League War, but they took it back with a little nod to the Super 7, and that's forming the team that will eventually become the Justice League, man. Right now we're in Justice League War, which is pretty much a war between superheroes, that's what it is. It's a war between superheroes, man. And um, for for Batman to get Superman to join the team, and for Batman to know who the Flash is and have respect for him, and for Batman and Green Lantern to kind of like not even know who they are, and for Batman really to not even exist in reality just as a myth, and then Cyborg being created, and then Diana being the symbol of of no most negativity at it, uh, in a sense, but she's also a, a symbol of of empowerment for women and then having Shazam join the team as this lost boy that has the secret <laughs> it's just perfect man and then you got Green Lantern man let's let's talk about Green Lantern for a little bit Green Lantern <laughs> I, I I really like this version of Green Lantern I, and I, I know I talked about it a little bit in the beginning but I just wanted to say man that uh it shows his leadership skills, like, he's not always just this clown, this little joker, you know, this funny man, you know, he has a serious, you know, uh, role to play, and I think that's a good thing, man, to kind of, I think, let me just put it this way, what Justice League War did for DC Comics and for the Justice League, for me, is to present these characters in a more serious tone, a relatable tone, and to give us a little bit of confidence, man, of what is to come from DC Comics and future installments, man. All right. Um, let's go talk about Dark Side for just a couple of seconds. Then we'll be out of here, man. Dark Side is an absolute, ridiculously scary character, man. I, I will say that right now. And I'll end with this. I think. As of right now, I'm saying that The Rock is either going to be Cyborg or he's going to be Darkseid. Dead serious. That's it. And the reason why I say that is because in this Justice League War, I'm not going to lie, Cyborg looked like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Darkseid looked like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. 
Justice League War, ladies and gentlemen, is a 10 out of 10 star movie. A rewatchability factor, man, is 10 out of 10 stars. And you will be watching the end credit scene um, a lot. Probably like maybe 10 or 15 times like I did. I'm pretty sure, man, because you, you got to catch it. You're just like, what? I can't believe that, man. Yeah, I got to see that again. And uh, we'll just look forward to the next installment, man. We're out of here. Um, look in the description box, man, for where you can buy this thing, man, on Amazon.com. And uh, let me know what you thought of the uh, the film, man. And did you like this uh, Super 7 nod and, and all that good stuff, man? Um, and if you did listen to this and you didn't get a chance to see Justice League War, I didn't really spoil that much, man. But there was major spoilers, man. And uh, I do apologize for that. But let's just be honest. It's your fault because you didn't listen. <laughs> right here.